Sea hounds, everyone. The OG sharks of the Don't Starve universe and some of the most aggressive mobs around. Now, they used to replace the would-be hounds of a hound wave when we were out sailing on the high seas come that time, but have since been replaced themselves by crocodiles. So then, how do we even encounter these beasts nowadays, and why should we care? Well, it is all going to involve some math and a deal of illegal fishing. So I'm sorry, kids. Your summer is over. Nah, I kid, and it's not gonna be that bad. And you'll catch on real quick, I think. But sea hounds here are nothing to simply skim over either, so you should pay attention. Each boast 150 health, 20 damage a bite, a fast attack speed, and are just fast in general. So when encountering these streamlined sharks, you're also gonna be doing so in groups of two to four. So you're gonna wanna limit the amount of hits you take for sure. Try to sail around to get them on a similar attack cycle and get one hit in yourself. Two is possible, sure, and you can get two in to finish them off individually when needed. However, they're gonna munch you before a third ever comes into play, so don't even try it. They're a dangerous bunch for sure. You gotta try to focus them down one by one. And be prepared to see them and thus do that often, as they are essentially the game's counter to us murdering stuff out at sea. Cause have you ever wondered why both crocodogs and sea hounds sometimes spawn on the water after a kill or two, when other times we can just go on a murder spree without seeing either one? Well, it's due to the fact that sea hounds are now quote unquote, locked behind a mechanic in which any meats that are dropped in the water will now have a 40% chance to spawn sea hounds in. That is, a 40% chance compared to the 60% chance for encountering crocodogs instead, mind you. And yup, with that, math class is in session. But don't get fooled. No sea attack is gonna take place without us hitting a probability roll, and said probability roll comes down very simply to a hunger value of a meat-based food. In short, take the 10 hunger of a rainbow jellyfish here and divide it by 200 to get a value of 0 0.05, of course. We can then take that and multiply it by 100 in order to find our percentage chance at spawning a sea attack, which in this case is 5%, of course. So this means that for every killed or dropped rainbow jellyfish, we have a 5% chance to see either a group of crocodogs or sea hounds. See? That's kind of easy. And obviously, the higher the hunger value of the meat, the higher the chance at encounters. Like with the Eye of the Tiger Shark here, for example. With its 75 hunger, it offers us a whopping 37.5% chance at encounters each and every time we drop it. And yes, we can actually just continuously drop the same food item over and over and over again for said encounters. In fact, it's actually better to do that because stacks don't matter. It's individual pieces of meat that mean more. So I hope all that made sense, cause we're moving on. Be mindful though, because each piece of meat is separately going to roll this probability, they all could individually lead to their own separate encounters. So this means that spamming meat drops might lead to multiple groups of multiple sea hounds and crocodogs all at the exact same time, which is obviously incredibly dangerous. Word of advice, however, now that you know how to quote unquote farm sea hounds, you can always control their spawns and seek the help of some water beefs at the end of the day, just like how we use beefaloes with regular hounds. But be mindful though, again, not only with a massive group of hounds and such winning most fights, you also need to be aware of both how many water beefalo you obviously have available to you, as well as the fact that we as players do not actually have to be the ones dropping the meat into the water in order for these encounters to spawn. Any meat, at any time, dropped from anything that actually drops it, will roll the dice, so to speak. Well, not all meat, actually. For you see, for both crocodogs and sea hounds, mind you, things like monster meat, roe, and even shark fins will not spawn encounters. And heck, absolutely no monster-related food can be used in this at all. Still, there's not really much on the water that even drops monster-related stuff, so I wouldn't think about this too much. What should concern you, though, is both a sea hound's persistence and aggro as both go hand in hand to make them even more dangerous potentially. Cause here's the thing, sea hounds never despawn. 
So if you leave them be, they will either just be waiting for you upon your return, or they will be seen chasing other sea life until they get a chance to actually eat it themselves. And this of course means that sea hounds could potentially just literally spawn more sea hounds as often as they bloody want. So that's a freaking thing. Remain vigilant. So with that, how do we go about killing these things? Particularly when we have a large school of them munching at our butts. Well, the water beefalo thing is a great idea when controlled, of course. However, nothing beats a classic elephant cacti farm, everyone. And yes, we can actually do it with sea hounds. Now, did I set this up as best as I could have? No. Absolutely not. But the idea is sound and that's all I really wanted to tell you about. It's incredibly repeatable too, as even if a cactus quote unquote dies, all you need to do is dig it up, replant it, and refertilize it, and it's back in business. This here is very likely the best sea hound farm in the game. And yeah, sure, I know what you're thinking. We got bolphins too. And they are very, very good at a lot of things. But these cute little guys have some problems, mind you. For one thing, they will attempt to eat the loot that we dropped to intentionally spawn the encounters in the first place. But worst of all, they will actually just eat the loot dropped by what we're trying to farm, including the super rare shark fins. And yes, while the first problem can be solved very easily by either spawning encounters away from them first or through seawalls here, the latter isn't something that we can actually control all that well. I mean, if we use the fact that sea hounds cannot attack sea walls, I guess we could limit bullfins to one side of them as we fight some of the other hounds on the other side of the walls, over the walls, as yes, we can attack through them. We might get something here and there, but just don't overthink this, folks. It's don't starve shipwreck for Pete's sake. Use elephant cactus. That's, or you could be a dum dumb and just tank them all the time on an encrusted boat with a sea yard nearby or something, but you know, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Beardo's just here to give you the rundown. And before we talk the loot rundown, I'd like to mention two last spawning potentials here. Whale hunting and special set pieces. When a whale carcass bursts, it explodes in all sorts of meat, of course. So anticipate a feeding frenzy of sorts now and then. But if you ever see a lone cargo boat on the water, know that jumping onto the ship will result in either crocodogs or sea hounds coming to nip at you immediately. And why is that? Well, cause this here is actually a set piece trap, so be mindful. But yes, what do sea hounds drop at the end of the day? Well, monster meat guaranteed, a hound's tooth 12.5% of the time, and a shark fin here also 12.5% of the time. Now, shark fins cannot be cooked, but they already restore a healthy 25 hunger and 20 health. So that's pretty nice. But what's not so nice is the minus 15 sanity per munch, so make note there. However, shark fins also go into some pretty special crafts, like the sleek hat here. One fin, two vines, and one coconut will offer us a hat that will increase our movement speeds by 25% overall, both when we're on a boat and on land, mind you. And yes, it stacks very well with all the other speed boosts available in Shipwrecked, so you're gonna be zoom zooming in no time. Oh, it also makes strong winds 50% less effective to us, but that's really nothing special, honestly. Appropriate, though, as now we become streamlined, if you know what I mean. Ah, but the creme de la creme of the shark fin crafts is this. Shark fin soup. Now, its stats might not blow you away. At but 12.5 hunger, minus 10 sanity, and 40 health restored. But not only is its recipe really simple, a shark fin soup also hides an ability that increases our naughtiness by 10 with each and every slurp, meaning it is one of the only ways in all of Don't Starve history to spawn Krampus without having to murder innocent creatures. And that's pretty darn cool. But don't hunt sharks, folks. It ain't cool. And the game agrees, as shark fins here are one of the only fish foods that cannot be traded to the octopus. I mean, he still gives us one 7.69% of the time, but what have you there? Oh, and since shipwrecked, well, honestly, maybe solo don't starve in general, but still, since shipwrecked is broken, mobs that aren't supposed to eat shark fins still do, even when the game specifically makes it to where shark fins cannot actually be used to feed said mobs elsewise. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Just mind your fins. But one last thing before we go here. 
While Hound Teeth will come a plenty with Crocodogs, of course, I figured I would just throw in the Shark Tooth Crown in a video about sharks, because while it doesn't do anything on land, it will provide a plus 6.6 .6 sanity per minute regeneration effect on a boat. So there you go. Enjoy it. And there you have it, everyone. A guide on sea hounds within Don't Starve Shipwrecks. Now, I've been meaning to get around to these sharky fiends for ages now. So I'm very happy to have taken you all on both a swift math course as well as an illegal fishing trip. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Perhaps we won't be needing a bigger boat. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.